Hello and welcome to the Rubber Duck Dev Show. I'm Chris. I'm Creston. And today we're going to talk about ORM versus SQL. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into that in just a couple of minutes, but before we do that, we can review. How was your week? I am spending as much time as I can working on the course, uh, prepping it for release January 29th. Is the projected date. This is my PostgreSQL performance optimization course. What's making this a little bit different than other courses that I've done is I literally, well, let me take a step back. I pledged to have a multi terabyte database to be doing the testing for. So I have the schema all set up, but Basically, I need to program how to create all of this data and the amount of time it's going to take to churn through. Basically, my machine's going to be running 24-7 for quite a while, building up all this uh, fabricated data, essentially, but trying to get it as close to real world as possible. So this is just a whole nother level that I'm taking on I need to do before I can actually record you know, the lion's share of the content. So I'm spending a whole lot of time doing that basically. And then on the as time is available, you know, do everything else that's I need to be doing for, for the company. Right. So yeah, so that that's pretty much what I've a lot of what I've been working on. How about you? Um, well, we've got our on December 15th, we've got our code freeze. So we're Things were going well, but you know, there, of course, there's always things the, were going well. Yeah, well, there's always the last minute, thirteenth hour. Oh my God, we we missed a thing, thing. Um, right. You know, so there's all those things going on. That's it. Like any production release, almost ever goes through that little fun fire drill. Um, but uh, so next week is going to be a bit of a scramble for me. Uh, just a lot of. I's crossed and T's dotted that need to go on then. But uh, um, it'll, you know, after that, I'll get to kind of take a deep breath and take some time off and, and you know, rejuvenate a little bit. Um, right now, I've got a, a bit of a ball buster where um, we use Travis as our CI CD. And yep. I've got. Um, I've been doing this R swag stuff to get the, the API docs into swagger. And I've run into the situation where our normal suite uses transactional. Oh, hi focus. Um, our normal, come on camera. All right, there we go. Um, I'm not that ugly. Am I? Jeez. Um, our normal, uh, specs use we use database cleaner and it uses a transaction cleaning uh, mm -hmm. strategy. Right. But for our swag, in some of the cases, you can't do that because it ends up doing uh, multi-layered nesting of the transactions because of how we're making the calls and stuff. So I need to make it uh, for the R swag tests. They need to just be the truncation strategy. And that works perfectly fine. I've got it all set up. So, you know, database cleaner, if it's our swag, make it this, if it's make it trunk and, and if it's not make it trans transactional. But when I put it on Travis, it's given me all kinds of fits and it's like, it's loading the, the R swag helper when it shouldn't be. And it's looking at the, the commands wrong. And so things are breaking all over Travis. And then for some reason, the Travis setup is running Postgres when our, this particular um, platform app runs MySQL. So I'm like looking at this going, you know, and this stuff was all set up years ago, long before I got there. I'm looking at this going, why, why in the hell are we running Postgres <laughs> in this, in this test setup when we don't use Postgres so, so in the app? So, okay. Right, right. <laughs> So I think maybe what has happened is that there was some kind of, when they were setting up all the different apps, you know, because we've got SOA and so we've got a 8 million diff 
little apps and they were setting those up in Travis and they were probably doing a lot of cut and paste because most of them do use Postgres. And that got kind of spaghettied into the setup for the for this thing. And now I can't unspaghettify it. So that's my next major hurdle is trying to figure out how to get Travis to play nice again. So it's always just the weird crap. That shouldn't be a problem, but yeah, it's it's know. the the outliers that become the time sinks, right? Yeah, I this this that. project that's going to take us three months takes five days, and then oh, this little five minute problem turns into a month long slog. Yeah, because I, I hate that so much because I'm I'm sitting there, I was like, this should be easier. What's going on? I right. you know, it just drives me bananas. So speaking of complicated things that should be easier. We're going to talk about ORM versus SQL. So for those of you who don't deal with that stuff, SQL is structured query language. So you talk that's what you talk to a database with. That's show me this stuff, put this stuff in there, take this stuff out. At least ORM, a relational database. <laughs> right, relational, yeah. Um, ORM, object relational mapping, is kind of a wrapper on that that lets the language talk in the language that it talks in so like ruby you you tell it hey give me these things you make the request to the database talk to the database through ruby and the orm 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 translates <laughs> that into sql behind the scenes to actually send it to the database so you can kind of think of orm as like an sql wrapper um, yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, the ORM, it basically means it maps the objects in Ruby to the relations in the database. Right. And, and vice versa. But yeah, it is clearly a wrapper. Yeah. Right. And so there are some. But it some never people, has a top 100 hit. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and there are some people that, you know, are like, ORM is, is evil, horrible, bad, and nasty. Just let me write SQL shut up and get out of my way. And then there are people that are like, well, why would you write SQL? That's gross and nasty and evil and horrible. Exactly. ORM is the way to go. So uh, we're going to kind of talk about pros and cons of, of those things. And, and then we'll hear from, from you guys um, in the comments, what you think about this. So first of all, what, do, what do you prefer ORM or SQL? That's an interesting question. What do I prefer? So when I am working with data in the database, I prefer SQL. It's to me, it's simple, easy to work with. It's actually what I started working for with started working with first before Ruby. Um so and a lot of times when I need to pull back some relatively complex data, the first thing I do is I write it in SQL. I don't grab or I don't open my Rails console immediately to do that. So then what I have to do a lot of times is I do it in SQL and then I translate it to the ORM to active record in the case <laughs> of Ruby on Rails case. So I actually translate it to that. Now you're probably thinking, why the heck are you translating it? Well, th th that'll get into... I was kind of into, thinking that a little bit. <laughs> well, that'll get into long explanation, but basically... So in terms of what I prefer, that's what I prefer. I prefer SQL. If I was never introduced to Active Record early on, I might have just stuck with SQL because I, again, that's just how I think I'm more accustomed to it. Um, and there, I keep on having to drop down to SQL. Like I have a where statement with double quotes with actually what it should be within there. So it's already... The DSL is already polluted mm -hmm. to, you know, to my thinking when I have to work around lack of features in the active record ORM. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's another reason. So that's my preference, but why do I, in spite of that, still write most of the stuff in the ORM? And that is because I try to match whatever the style is of the project I'm working on. So if mm -hmm. I have tons of consulting clients, they all use the ORM, I'm going to be using the ORM. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. if they happen to choose some other thing and using some SQL weird thing to do or SQL weird thing, well, I'm going to do the SQL weird thing just to match what their code base is because, you know, I'm of the opinion when you step into a code base, there should be certain standards that everyone is going to follow. So if I'm going to join a project and start writing uh, and I basically try to write to the style of what how the code already exists. Okay. So, so let's that's, say so that's kind of why, even though I have that preference, yeah, I tend to, you know, just write in the style of the existing code, and ninety percent of the time, everybody's using ORMs. Right, that's true. So if if you were doing like a greenfield project in a vacuum all by yourself, you would pick SQL by default. But then at this point, not necessarily. Because I also have to think, you know, there is a point in the future where I will probably bring on another Rails developer to assist me, or maybe I step back and do more strategic stuff and day-to-day -day coding is taking over, taken over by another developer. Well, I don't want him to have to endure SQL stuff that he's like, this is Greek. I don't know what you're talking about here, man. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> So, you know, so again, it's not only matching what the project does, but it's also in the general ecosystem of developers, what, is, what do people tend to do? And right. if you're talking about Ruby on Rails project, everybody's using Active Record or the vast majority. There are some that, you know, are in the, I hate it so much, you know, I, I, I right. use raw SQL or, or whatever, or some other mapper solution. So because of that, I still go ahead and use active record. And, you know, it's, even though there's a lot of people that complain about it, I still use it, you know, for 95% of my queries. Mm -hmm. So there are 5% where I'm like, this is just going to be too difficult. I'm just going to do, or... I'd have to research a whole lot of how to do it if I can even do it in active record. So I'm just going to drop down to SQL and do it that way. Yeah. See, I actually have kind of the reverse preference myself. Um, and I, you know, it's not that I can't write SQL. I spent 20 years doing SQL. Um, so I would consider myself kind of master level at SQL, you know. Um, and in fact, I've written such complex SQLs that I had one that I wrote that was, I think, 11 and a half pages printed out, one query. It was so insanely complex because the database structure underneath it that I was querying against was stupid. But um, it, you know, so I can write queries. I prefer ORM for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not doing complex querying like that anymore. So ORM, I very rarely run into a limitation with the, I'm, I'm speaking of Rails ORM, active yeah. record. I very rarely run into a limitation where I need to switch over to SQL because the ORM won't handle it easily. Um, so that's one thing. And it's just easier for me to think in, you know, kind of stuttered English than query. Um, two, it's an abstraction layer. so. To me, it's more maintainable, not not only from the fact that more people read it now than SQL in the Rails world, but if I need to switch from Postgres to MySQL, I don't have to make as many changes if I'm all ORM rather than if I'm direct query. Um, eh, if they're following, they're pretty much following the same SQL standard. So there's. It's not too much to point. that. No, it's well, not to too a much, large but, point. <laughs> yeah, but it's there still are some differences, and um, this at least the ORM world that I have to work in, it makes that a simple switch. The only thing I have to do is change the the database YAML file over, um, which I have actually done on this project because I wanted to see how how much differently things would run in Postgres than in MySQL. Um, 
turns out not a whole lot. I mean, there's a little bit of improvement, but not worth a big switch to all our customers. So, um, but it was just changing the database YAML and pointing to, you know, Postgres instead of a MySQL, which was nice uh, because I've been through things where um, it was more directly into the database and the SQL stuff, and we wanted to change databases, and it was gross. Um, it was not not nearly as simple. Um, so, you know, I see abstraction benefits there. Um, and it's, it's to me, it's just easier. My brain has an easier time rubber ducking in that language than in SQL. Um, so you know, I but a really personal preference. I think. I think the biggest difference between the two is how many developers use one over the other for maintainability, like you brought up. Well, I mean, the vast majority. I mean. The mass majority learned it because they were learning Ruby on Rails and what is right. taught in all the books and classes. It's mm -hmm. it's the ORM, it's the active record ORM is what's you know taught. So maybe they had a database class in college that had SQL in it. Other than that, how much do they really? My perception is not a lot of developers have learned a lot about SQL. Right. I mean, maybe they've known some, they've learned some of the basics yeah. and can, you know, read queries. And what, I mean, I think most of them have kind of the basics. I think they could do a select query to grab a few things. But right. um, apart from that, I don't know. I think it starts to drop down pretty quickly, the number of people that can do a whole lot yeah. more with it. Yeah, more advanced things like inner and outer joins and, and unions and subqueries and all that kind of stuff when you should use them when you shouldn't how you should index tables how you shouldn't um yeah i would agree i don't i don't think most developers now uh, rails developers now and and most other frameworky type environments probably don't know a whole lot of sql i would say though to you developers who who do that um, and maybe, you know, a little, you know, you can do a, a simple select or a simple create or update. I would recommend, highly recommend learning some more advanced SQL and spending some time in that because it helps you figure out what you should be doing with the ORM if you know how that ORM translates to SQL and what that means in the SQL language. Um, because there are a lot yeah. of things you could do with ORM that you wouldn't know you could do if you didn't kind of understand the underpinnings of the SQL that it was using. Yeah, learning one helps you learn the other. In other right. words, knowing that, oh, I can do some of these things with SQL. Oh, well, how can I do that in the ORM? And then you add a new tool to your toolbox, essentially. Right. Yeah, you know, and something something like understanding the difference between outer joins and inner joins and left and right joins and and uh, things like that can help you figure out how you want to put data together and how you need to structure your data in order to report it in certain ways to be able to report it. So, you yeah, know. and I think I think I may have mentioned this in a previous episode, but like I was working with a client who needed to build a ranking system for something. And uh, he said, hey, I kind of want to build this ranking system. Here's the criteria, you know, boom, 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 boom you know, as to prioritize things. And it was a, a simple order would not do it. <laughs> so looking at all the requirements, and I was thinking about all the Rails code this could potentially involve. And I'm like, wait a minute. I think I can use window functions in SQL to do this. So I used the window functions of ranking to precisely pull the data exactly as needed mm -hmm. with one query and no other Ruby code required. And I was right. like, awesome. There you go. Because it had like, I don't know, there's like 
10 different line item requirements. And I said, all right, let's just try doing an SQL. Let's see where it falls apart. And I was able to do boop, 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 boop. I did all of them. I was like, all right, great. It works. <laughs> yep. Well, and you know, that's a, that's a good point that if you know, there are times when the ORM can't do some things that would be very useful to do, you know, that you have to go in and do direct query stuff to accomplish that in a reasonable and, and time accomplish frame. it much more efficiently, right? Not only in probably lines of code, but definitely, so definitely less lines of code and more perform performantly, right? Because if you can send one good query, you know, off to the the database and let it do its thing, rather than sending fifteen different queries that come back and Give me this piece now. Give me this piece. If you know how to do that in just and a now, query, you got to iterate and filter in right. the Rails code, and that's just yeah, blew things down. Yeah. So knowing SQL can be hugely helpful because there are times with ORM, and while I, you know, I mentioned earlier, I don't have to deal with that much anymore because our our stuff is fairly simplistic from that standpoint. Um. I have in my career many times said, I can't do this efficiently with the ORM. I need to do it directly with the query. And as much as I'd okay. rather do it with the ORM, the better choice was the query. And like I said, 95% of the time I'm using the ORM because again, I'm 95% of the time dealing with super simple stuff. And I learned Ruby on Rails from the same books and courses and whatever as everyone else. So I've right. been taught it so i never really questioned my preference but looking back at my preference i still think i like i like the sql and you know but the other five percent of the time i'm like all right i'm going to drop down do it in sql and deal with the data as it comes yeah so i you know it's it's kind of i don't really see a big one is so much better than the other. They're both useful in certain conditions. I can understand people liking the ORM because it's a little simpler to wrap your head around, especially if you're a newer programmer. Um, SQL isn't exactly a simple language to learn right off. Why? I, well, <laughs> yeah, if you've been doing it for 30 years, of course it's simple, but um, it, it, yes, you Select can learn it. Columns but it's, I want from table. Right, results. but it's... <laughs> But what I'm saying is it's easier to learn the ORM than it is to learn the query, the SQL directly, in my estimation. Anyway. But um, it's a little bit more natural. At least the Rails the active record is a little bit more natural language than uh, query stuff. Because, e you know, even just understanding the the verbs like select and where and stuff is update and and you know and the formatting of the language is it's not always intuitive so not that it's difficult but you know not quite as easy as active record i think so yeah. anywho <laughs> um that's uh but I, I i don't see the big the big fuss one way or the other honestly because i have run into not personally, but I've run into things online where people are like, just, oh, God, never use ORMs, or, oh, God, never use SQL directly. And I'm like, why? Neither well, one I think the people that don't want to use SQL directly is because they don't want to deal with the SQL. <laughs> they want you to <laughs> stick with the ORM so they don't have to deal with it. I think people that, and then there's people that hate the ORMs. And really, that's because of, what is it, the basically impedance mismatch. Basically, there's a whole lot of things objects can do. There's all, you know, things like inheritance and it can be difficult to map that to the relational database structure. Yeah. So I think cases. they're in, yeah. So I think they're in is why they dislike the ORM or the decisions that some of the ORMs make. Yeah. And there are cases where the ORM does things in a less efficient way than then you probably should. Um, yeah. And you're, you know, it's 
a little bit is trust, you know, trust in the ORM, you know, trust in its magic. So it may right. be doing some things that you're like, what? It's doing this? Why is it doing this? You know, because I've seen certain cases with stories, like when I was doing some scaling Postgres episodes where it was setting certain configuration values to do something that was causing problems. And it's like, why is it doing, you know, there's just this questioning thing as to, you know, the problem was caused by things the ORM was doing mm -hmm. that the developer didn't know about. So it's kind of like you have a trigger right. going off you didn't expect or a callback that went off that or didn't go off that you didn't expect, you know. So it's I think that kind of frustrates some programmers. Right. And, and you know, if you're going to use an ORM, you really should have something in your development kit like Bullet or those those kind of reporting things that'll tell you, hey, I had to run all these queries. You may have an N plus one here. This one took this long and, and it gives you the actual queries that we're running. That's a huge help when you're using ORMs because you don't necessarily know exactly what queries are popping off back there. Um, so it's something you really should pay attention to. And you could read the logs, but it's much easier to have a gem like bullet or something to, to just tell you, you know, right on the, on the page, here's all the crap I had to run to get this stuff to your eyeballs. So. But, uh, you and know, isn't active record, isn't there, what's the command to get the SQL of a. Uh, to, to query, to underscore query, I think, or to underscore SQL. I can't remember which one is which in active record. Yes. So you can do a an, an ORM call and just put two. The two query or two SQL, I can't remember, on the end, and it'll show you the query. Yeah, that's what it's talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you do that, then you can basically help teach yourself a little bit of SQL if you want. Yep. And that's a great way to start learning because if you understand what or you're Or even doing... just look at the Rails log because it shows you the actual queries as it's doing stuff. You know, this account yeah. load is doing this SQL query. Um, well, yeah, so, and that's a good way to learn it. Although I will say, I don't particularly like looking through logs. I'd rather have other ways like bullet or to query. But oh, no, 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 I, totally. Yeah. I mean, because it points things out to you, it's more right. like, Hey, there's an exception, dude, pay attention to this rather than, let me just look through the logs. I'm just saying. <laughs> If you're at the point where you kind of want to learn a little bit more about SQL and you're not that familiar with it, you could kind of just load up a page and say, all right, let me just look at the SQL that's generated, you know, how many different was, ones were generated. So I'm saying it's more of an educational thing, not right. from a alerting you, hey, you got an N plus one query going on or, or whatever else. Yep. So, you know, make sure that like I'm a big proponent of ORM, OR, oh, hi English. I'm a big proponent of ORMs. Um, I like them myself, but I think it's important to understand SQL and to know it pretty well. If you're going to be doing that kind of, if you're not doing front end programming, if you're doing back end programming, you should understand yeah. SQL. You know, if you're just doing the JavaScript stuff, when if you're doing all front end things, not really. Oh, you pretty much you need, need to know to, is the API, right? <laughs> You, you don't care about SQL, but if you're doing the backend programming, if you're writing things with an ORM, you should understand the queries that go on behind them so that you know when you should switch to query directly because it's more efficient than the ORM call. Um, yeah, it's kind of like any developer should know the the API. The front ends need to know the API they're working with. Well, the backend developers, if you're talking to a database, you should kind of know the APA language that that's using too. Yep. That's a fact. Uh, so, and, you know, I, I don't really see any other big sticking points between SQL and RRMs. Do you? No, no. It's just, it's just, I, I find it interesting that because even though, like I said, you know, I have preferences, I harmoniously work 
between them. It's not, right. you know, rocket science to use one or the other. Um, I, again, 95% of the time I'm using the ORM just because that's what most people use. And I want to be matched kind of what the general developer community is using in case I ever want to bring on help in case I'm working with a client in a consulting engagement. But I have no qualms about dropping down and using SQL if needed for the other 5% of the time. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, I think the long and short of it is don't argue about which side of the fence you sit on. Just let's just knock the fence down and, and all exactly. of us hang out in both yards. Learn a little you know? bit of both <laughs> and find out how you want to leverage and use it. Right. So, you know, that's our, our PSA for today. Um, so, uh, you know, all you new new developers starting out, you know, make sure you, you kind of go down both paths and learn as you go. Um, any of you guys that are, you know, s just feet planted on one side or the other, uh, let us know in the comments why. Why why are you pro-ORM yeah, sure or pro-SQL? Th I'm sure there are, we've missed some things that the anti-ORM people <laughs> despise. So uh, oh, if we I'm miss sure. something, yeah. put, put, it, put it in the comments. Yeah. And it's a broad topic. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about here, but we don't have a, you know, eight hour show. So, um, you know, we've, that's our, our Reader's Digest condensed version of our thoughts, but let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and make sure you ding that notification bell. So, you know, when we go, um, I was going to say go live, but we don't go live very often anymore. Uh, but when we upload videos, um, we are going to take a break for the holidays. We're tired. We need a little break. I'm sure you won't begrudge us, you know, taking a little nap here for the next. So we are going to take the next three weeks off uh, and we will be back in January with some very big changes. So make sure you stay tuned to all the channels. Uh, you can reach us on X at Ducky Dev Show. You can uh, come to rubberduckdevshow.com, sign up for the newsletter and see all of our videos there. Uh, you can reach out to us on the Rubber Duck Dev Show um, um, Discord. That's the thing we do. Um, and all of those links will be in the description below. Um, please let us know what you think about this topic. Please let us know if you have any other topics that you would like to see on the show, and we will take them on board and try to get them scheduled in. Uh, like I said, we will be off for three weeks, but we will be back in January with some very big changes. Very exciting. Uh, so you'll want to make sure to stay in touch with us for that. Um, so we will see you guys then. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or whichever thing you celebrate. Happy one of those. Until January, happy programming. Happy programming. <laughs>